Hey, everybody. Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is January 3rd, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. If you can't tell, I am back at home in my studio. Took the red eye last night, so I slept in a bit this morning, but it is nice to be back. Allows me to take a more detailed look at the weather when I am at home. Right now, frontal system crossing the area. Thunderstorm potential behind this. Coastal areas right now, some thunderstorms ongoing could push across the Sacramento Valley towards the foothills of the Sierra Nevada as well. And then we've got some interesting weather in the extended forecast. You're going to want to see this. We'll check that out as we go through the video here this morning. There's that frontal system. It's bringing some rain down across some of the San Joaquin Valley. And again, look at these thunderstorms here towards Fort Bragg. There's Point Arena right there. A couple of lightning strikes moving across. So no doubt people are hearing those rumbles of thunder and maybe some flashes of lightning out there. And again, that's been moving across the area as we go through the day today. Maybe it'll bring a thunderstorm a bit further south down towards the Bay Area, but most of that activity should be Bay Area north. <clears throat> And if we take a look at some of the reports, just be wary that there is some uh, there are some roadways being covered out there with water. Rock sites reported on some of the back roads as well. And again, you can see the frontal system there. And you got some fog reports across some of Southern California also this morning. Now, isolated thunderstorms today, this does apply, but if you notice, I think they just grabbed a graphic here back from August 21st, 2023 on the Eureka National Weather Service page, but this does apply today, Friday afternoon and evening. I think they just forgot to update the date there. Uh, now, taking a look at Sacramento, California, look at this. You got winter storm warnings, 7 a.m. through 10 p.m. This is for today, 8 to 12 inches above 5,500 feet, 16 at some of the highest peaks, some pretty intense snowfall rates there also, and the snow levels are going to be dropping down as we go on into this afternoon and as that precipitation starts to wrap up. But this is below mo many of the past levels and there are a lot of chain controls going on out there right now. And if you take a look here, the Caltrans map, if you want to go ahead and Google this, <clears throat> this is a great tool because you can see we have chain controls. And if I zoom in on that, you can see where these chain controls are. You can see California Highway Patrol incidents. We got highway information. You can toggle this off and on. And if you click on that, it gives you more information on what exactly is going on. So highly recommend that if you are out traveling out and about. And again, National Weather Service Sacramento, just driving on the point there that we do have that chance of thunderstorms as we go through the day today, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, also got some big waves on the coastline, dangerous, potentially life-threatening surf, big breaking waves out there. And this goes through Friday, Saturday, that is today and tomorrow, and then on in through the early portion of next week as well. Now, this is what's next. This is the next big weather story here as we have a chance for some moderate to strong Santa Ana winds. I'm going to show you this in detail as we go through the weather maps uh, this morning. And yeah, potential fire weather risk. Here we go again, right? Southern California, not much precipitation has fallen the last 180 days and not much is in the forecast. But we will take a look at that uh, as well. And taking a look at the wind advisory portions of uh, Las Vegas, you can see Baker right here, portions of California, Independence, 40 to 50. There's Highway 395, Southwest first. And then they may be underdoing some of these gusty north winds as well as we go on in through the day Saturday. It's going to be more of a crosswind for I-15 and the 40 out there also. So... Looking at Phoenix, Arizona, check this out. Hottest year on record. And it's not even close, folks. You can see these average temperatures. Look at how close the space these are. 77.3, 77.2, 77. And yeah, 78.6, just ridiculous warmth there for Phoenix, Arizona. 39 record high temperatures set or tied and record warm temperatures set or tied, 42. And it's very, a very staggering uh, statistic there from Phoenix, Arizona National Weather Service. And also talking about uh, <clears throat> Reno National Weather Service, there is a wind advisory out there. You can also see the winter storm warnings. Some of the winter weather advisories are in effect uh, right now also. And look at this, some of the ridges gusting over 100 miles per hour, I guess the 60 to 65 for some of the wind prone areas as well. Now, taking a look at where we are right about now, here we go, 12, there's 1, 2 p.m. as I'm speaking, and you can see the precipitation is going to be tracking down across some of the Sierra Nevada here, maybe down towards some of the north slopes of the transverse range also. Some of the showery activity continues on in through tomorrow morning, but then we are going to maybe clip Northern California with a little bit more precipitation Saturday night into Sunday, but then we are going to dry out for a while here, and we are going to build some high pressure across the Great Basin, and 
and a lot of you guys already start to know what I'm talking about here. Some strong offshore winds likely to occur as we go on in towards next week. We'll be taking a look at that in some detail here in a moment. But first things first, there goes the frontal system. European on the left, GFS on the right. This, these are both hot off the presses and just kind of showing you that we start to build the ridging here across some of the West Coast of North America. But also models are in agreement. We get a piece of this Arctic air moving down across the Intermountain West. And this actually could cause some snow there for places like Reno, some of the east slopes of the Sierra Nevada also. You can see the GFS highlighting that a little bit more than what the European, but the European has a little bit of precipitation there but that's kind of that Arctic air mass moving down across some of the Great Basin. And then it wants to come down here and kick off this upper level low off of Baja. And that could try to spin been some precipitation back towards Southern California, portions of Arizona. It doesn't show much, but I'll show you more on that here in a moment. Keeps most of that and the bulk of the precipitation off to the east. And then we have additional inside slider systems with high pressure filling back in. And we could have multiple offshore wind events as we go through the extended forecast. Now, taking a look at the North American model, again, I just want to point out today that we are getting some pretty strong winds, as I showed you, some of the gusty winds across the ridge tops of the Sierra Nevada. We pick things up as we go through this afternoon and evening out of the southwest and west, and then we turn things northerly as we go on in towards tomorrow morning. You can see some of these winds are fairly robust, and those are pretty strong crosswinds for some of the interstates out there, so high-profile vehicles, watch out for that. And then you can see as we go on in towards Saturday night and into Sunday, we start to turn things offshore already up and down the, the mountainous areas of Southern California across the desert area still out of the north. And that is going to be an ongoing theme here over the next, you know, maybe week to 10 days or even more. And if we take a look at the European, so this goes a bit further out. There goes the system moving through today. Now what we're looking for is we start to turn things back offshore as we go through later this weekend. And then watch what happens as we scroll off in towards Tuesday. Look at that across some of the Sacramento Valley out of the north. You start the northeast winds across some of the Cascades and some of the Sierra Nevada as we go on into the day Tuesday. And look at these very strong winds develop offshore Santa Ana winds, Diablo winds up across the Bay Area, just absolutely roaring offshore. And look at that strong northeast winds across the Sierra Nevada. And that could go on for a while. It even bounces back there as we go to Friday morning for Southern California, scroll off into the extended. And again, we could get another round of offshore winds, you know, looking way off into fantasy land. We're not going to put too much stock in that just yet, but that could, you know, uh, could be something we have to deal with in the future as well. Now, looking at 700 millibar temperatures, 10,000 feet, I like to show what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This is the frontal system moving through central and northern California as we speak, bringing our mountain snows and whatnot. And then we watch off in towards the early portion of the next week. You see this lobe of air there. That's what's bringing some of this Arctic air down across the Great Basin. And it's not going to feel like Arctic air by the time it gets out towards the coastal areas. I mean, it gives compression and warms and dries out quite a bit and that's what drives those Santa Ana winds and the Diablo winds and then you see some of that uh, colder air aloft get out there and create that upper level low which the bulk of the precipitation as I mentioned stays off to the east but some of that could try to wrap back around and it's worth watching over the next few days and then we continue to get some of these inside sliders here as we go through the extended forecast look at that another one which would not bring much precipitation and potentially more offshore winds. Now, 850 millibars, it's about 5,000 feet. So let's scroll through here. There's the system that's going through today. And then we look at that colder air aloft. And it's hard to see on at 5,000 feet, but you can kind of see it here. There would be that modified Arctic air moving across the Great Basin, upper level low right there off of Baja, California. And yeah, that will be our offshore wind event. And then you can see additional inside sliders as we go on into the future. And if we take a look at the upper level tropopause potential temperature, I just want to kind of show you there's that frontal system there. And then the next lobe comes swinging down across the southwest upper level low sets up right there. And then again, maybe another inside slider after that. Okay, rambling on a bit here. Let's take a look at 24 hour Run, uh, running totals here, a uh, Kuchera ratio. Kuchera ratio just means you're taking into account the lower levels of the atmosphere and its temperature. So it tries to give you a better uh, snow prediction there versus just a, a random or 
not a random, but a, you know, a set 10 to one ratio for the precipitation amounts. Uh, one inch of uh, rainfall or one inch of precipitation, a liquid would equal 10 inches of snowfall. Couture ratio does it a little bit different just by taking into account the lower levels of the atmosphere. So here we go as we wrap up tomorrow morning, you can see some decent amounts across the Sierra Nevada there, but then we start to go off into the future and it's not showing much. But then we get that Arctic front could bring a little bit of snowfall here as we go on in through the day two. Tuesday, it looks like, uh, but you know, the GFS had a little bit more, but not a lot. And then we scroll off into the extended forecast, and you kind of see we're getting that ridge of high pressure with the inside sliders not bringing much in the way of snowfall. So it looks like we may be getting a break on that front. Looking at the ensemble members here, so total 50th percentile. I'll put this into motion. We're going to kind of probe some of the potential here across Southern California, but as we scroll out here, here goes the upper level low. It's going to be spinning down here across Baja. And you can see the ensembles do show the potential for a little bit of that getting back up into the desert areas here in Southern California. But, but again, it, it's not much. It's barely even worth mentioning. But I, I just want to kind of point it out. Now, artificial intelligence. Let's see what that shows is the European model. And again, drying out considerably. There goes that Arctic front driving our strong offshore winds. I mean, look at this pressure gradient across the Great Basin. It's going to be just absolutely blasting out across portions of California as we go on in through this week coming up here. So, yeah, we're going to see the National Weather Service start to sound some alarms. And we're going to be dealing with some fire weather danger. And we could be dealing with multiple rounds of that. You can see the upper level low there as we go towards the end of the upcoming week. Does spin a little bit of precipitation up across some of the desert areas. So, again, that's that upper level low that we will be watching uh, day one excessive rainfall outlook this is wrapping up today so no big deal there and looking at total precipitation in inches again big swath of southern california nevada and some of the san joaquin valley has gotten you know very low amounts of rainfall here over the last six months or so and if we take a look at the uh, pre precipitation departure from average you can see that some areas are minus six to minus three across southern california which hardly gets any rainfall as it is you know uh, relatively speaking anyway but then you see that dipole that big uh switch here once you go bay area north and when you've been dealing with uh, well above average precipitation total. So yeah, big contrast. I get some comments saying that, yeah, well, Southern California is dry, but it's much more dry than it usually is. And, Cal and Northern California is much wetter than it usually is. And if we take a look at the percentage over the last 180 days, you can clearly see a lot of areas are below 5%, already sparse precipitation amounts, uh, almost non-existent here over the last six months. And this has been updated today, six to 10 day uh, temperature outlook above below eight to 14 day and yeah again not great there as you can expect below normal precipitation expected so anyway glad to be back home here uh hopefully you guys are liking the videos we're going to explore those offshore winds here you know in some uh, more detail here over the next few days we'll start to take a look at some of the expected wind speeds and whatnot and yeah we'll just kind of hunker down and kind of see what comes with that um, what else? Yeah, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.